Hello grade 9 students and welcome to an English lesson. My name is Anna and today we are going to continue our topic Youth Lifestyles. Всім привіт, мене звати Анна і сьогодні ми будемо продовжувати нашу тему, будемо говорити про молодіжну культуру та підлітків. So, Youth Lifestyles. Jaren, we are going to talk about grammar a little bit later and now let's think of something that actually is very close to every one of you. So as you are teenagers, there are of course some good and bad things of being one. So what are they? Take a look at the screen. What are the advantages and disadvantages of being a teenager? What is good about it? What are the advantages? What are the bad things about being a teenager? A teenager. Uh, these are the disadvantages. Give it a think. What could be pros of being a teenager or cons of being a teenager? You can make your own list of at least three points of advantages and at least three disadvantages. Отже, зараз у вас є хвилина на те, щоб написати власний список переваг підлітків та їхніх недоліків. Що такого хорошого, щоб бути підлітком, що поганого в тому, щоб бути підлітком? Напишіть власний список. So, one minute timer is on. Okay, now let's take a look at the screen and now you can see my own list of advantages and disadvantages of being a teenager. As you can see, I have more than three points in each category. So let's take a look at advantages first. So what are the good things of being a teenager? Young, that's the first advantage. You're young, you're beautiful, you are very lively. So that's probably the best advantage of being a teenager. The next one, as you're young, you have a lot of energy. So you're ready to do a lot of things and you have power and you have strength and you, are, you have energy to do these things. So that's the second one. What about the third one? Teenagers are usually very creative. They're not bounded by different um, fixed mindsets and so on. So they let their creativity do its best. The next one. As a teenager, you have many possibilities. You can do a lot of things, you can try a lot of things. And of course, you won't be blamed for that and you won't take much responsibility for doing these things. Another thing, another advantage is friendship. Usually teenagers are quite friendly and uh, at the age of 14, 15, 16, you get your new friends or you uh, you become closer friends uh, with the people you already know. So these are the advantages of being a teenager. Of course, these are not the only advantages. If you have some extra ones on your list, that's very nice. Now let's go to the disadvantages. What are the bad things, not so good things about being a teenager? So the first thing is that you have much homework. So instead of going out with your friends, you have to sit at home, do your homework, you have a lot of assignments to finish, so a lot of, ta lot of tasks to be done. And yeah, much homework is a disadvantage of being a teenager, one of the main ones. The next one, little freedom. You don't have enough freedom as a teenager. Usually you have your parents who tell you what to do, where to go, what not to do, where not to go. So yeah, that's probably a huge disadvantage of being a teenager. You cannot decide for yourself in many things. 
little spare time that's actually connected with homework and maybe some housework that your parents, for example, tell you or ask you uh, to help with the house uh, hold and so on, and you have home assignment to do. So, of course, that lessens the time that you might spend on um, developing yourself in different ways, going out, listening to music, reading some literature, and lots of other things that might be interesting to you. Another thing, much stress. Yeah, teenagers' lives are very stressful. You have a lot of things to be done. You have a lot of things to be accomplished. You have your friends. You might have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And then you have so many emotions and you become so stressed. So yeah, much stress is a huge disadvantage of being a teenager. Another thing, uh, lack of experience. Sometimes when you have to decide on your own what to do or not, what not to do, you don't have enough experience to analyze what should be done, what shouldn't be done. So yeah, that's also a disadvantage. Of course, if you have good friends uh, that are experienced enough, or if you have um, some other people to address to, that would be good if those are parents. So then, of course, you can address to them and ask them for help. Now we are going to read and listen to the dialogue between two friends. One of them has tried a very interesting activity they've never tried before. So, look at the screen, listen and read. So, here we have two people, John and Allison, and let's start reading. John, wow, that was amazing. I can't believe I just did that. Allison, neither can I. I was so frightened I could hardly watch you. I hope you took plenty of photos. Of course I did, but I'm not sure they'll be any good. My hands were shaking. Never mind, you can take better pictures next time. Next time? John, you're kidding. Don't tell me skydiving is going to be your new hobby. It, I think it might be. You're unbelievable. You were terrified before you got in the plane. I know, but that was all part of the thrill. Why don't you try it? Oh no, thanks. I would rather stay on solid ground, if you don't mind. All right, now that we have read and listened to the dialogue, let's take a look at the main points here. There are two friends, John and Allison, and John has tried a new activity. What is that activity? Do you remember? Of course, that's skydiving. Okay, does Allison like it? Allison seems to be quite confused as she was watching John skydiving. She was supposed to take plenty of photos. All right, let's check how well uh, you remember the facts from the dialogue that you have just read and listened. You have to say whether these statements are true or false. Let's take a look at the first sentence. The boy didn't do the activity. He failed it. So, is it correct, according to the dialogue, that he didn't do the activity, he didn't go skydiving and he actually failed it? What do you remember from the text? What do you remember from the dialogue? Okay, we can remember that he actually did it. So, this one should be false. Number two, the girl took pictures, but she thought they all were of bad quality. Is this statement true or false? What do you remember? She actually said that her hands were shaking, so is it true or false? It's for you to think now, we're gonna check in the end. Now let's take a look at the third one. The boy's friend hopes that John will take up skydiving as a hobby. Do you remember what Allison said to John about skydiving? Did she encourage him to take it up as a new hobby? Write down true or false in your copybooks. And the fourth one, John's friend doesn't have a desire to try skydiving. Is it true or false? Does Allison want to try skydiving on your own? Does she want to try it on her own? So, what do you think? Is that true or false? Okay, now that you have uh, your answers in your copybooks, let's check the answers. So the first statement is false. The boy did the activity, he, he was skydiving. Number two is true. 
Alison did take the pictures, but she actually was afraid that they were of bad quality because her hands were shaking. Number three is false. Alison hopes that John will not take up skydiving as a hobby. Number four, John's friend doesn't have a desire to try skydiving, so Alison said she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to try skydiving at all. That's why this statement is true. Okay, well done. Now let's take a look at the dialect once again. Here you can see the underlined phrases that actually support the previous statements, whether they are true or false. So you can find the information uh, for the previous exercise in the underlined parts of the dialogue. Okay, now that you have taken a look at the dialogue once again and you have noticed the underlined parts of it, let's move to the next part. Here we have the words in bold in the dialogue. How do they differ? What do they have in common? Let's take a look. We've got some sentences in which the words are highlighted with bold. Отже, маємо речення, в яких слова виділені жирним шрифтом. Це той самий діалог, який ми щойно з вами читали та слухали. Давайте поглянемо на нього з трішечки іншого боку. Отже, ми маємо подивитись на ті слова, які виділені жирним, і подумати, чим же вони відрізняються, а що в них є спільного. So, let's take a look at the sentences which contain these words. The first one, that was amazing. The next one, my hands were shaking. The third sentence, John, you are kidding. And the last one, don't tell me skydiving is going to be your new hobby. Okay, so all these words have one thing in common. That's the ending, I-N-G letters at the end of each word. Отже, всі ці слова мають одну спільну рису. Закінчення ing, закінчення ing. So, amazing, shaking, kidding, skydiving, going. But what are the differences? If you take a look at the word amazing, what part of speech is this? It's an adjective, це прикметник. Another one, shaking. Is it an adjective? No. Here it is a verb in a continuous form. Отже, в даному випадку це діє слово в продовжуваній формі. Like past continuous that we have already studied with you. The next one. You are kidding. This is the present continuous. It's also a verb in the continuous form. Отже, це теж слово в продовжуваній формі. The next word is skydiving. Okay. This one is not an adjective. This one is not a continuous form. This is a noun. Це слово skydiving, це іменник. And then we have is going to be phrase, and here it is a continuous form of the word. So going is the verb with the ing. Okay, what are we going to concentrate on today is a noun with ing ending. It's usually called a gerund. Отже, іменник, який має закінчення ing, називається gerund або герунді. So, as you can see, a gerund is a noun made from a verb by adding ing. And here it is like mathematics a little bit. You have to take the verb, for example, to read, then you add ing, and then what you get? That's the word reading. Отже, ми маємо дієслово, до якого ми додаємо закінчення ing, і це дієслово стає іменником. Wow, how can that happen? Actually, the end in ing helps us do it. Here you can also see some examples of how ing nouns can be used in English. Reading helps you learn English. Her favorite hobby is reading. I enjoy reading. So, as you can see, gerund or ing noun can be in the beginning of the sentence and it can be in the end of it. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the words here that we need to make the gerund forms from them. So, make the gerund by using ing. 
Давайте зробимо форму герундія, використовуючи закінчення ing. So, here we have the words to sing, to write, to swim, to study, to run, to travel, to shop. All of these words are verbs. Отже, всі ці слова – це дієслова. Для того, щоб утворити герундій, тобто іменник з закінченням ing, нам необхідно до цих дієслів додати закінчення ing. That's quite easy. So, let's take a look at the screen. The first word – to sing. Then we will have singing. To write. We add ing and we get writing. Pay attention that we miss out letter E. And there is W-R-I-T-I-N-G. Отже, буква E в нас цього слова випадає. To swim. We need to add ing and then we will get swimming. Pay attention, we have a double M in this word. The next one, to study. We need to add ing and then we get studying. Okay, the next one, to run. If we add ing, we get running. Pay attention to double N in the middle of the word. The next one, to travel. We need to add ing and then we get traveling. Double L before ing ending. And the last one, to shop. Here we will also have a double letter. In the end of shop, we will double letter P and then we get shopping by adding ing. Okay, good. I hope that now you understand the structure of how we make verbs become nouns by adding ing. And now let's take a look at uh, the screen once again. Here you can see the words that are usually followed by gerund. Отже, на екрані ви зараз бачите ті слова, після яких зазвичай ставиться герунді, тобто слова з закінченням ing. Це такі слова як dislike, enjoy, hate, adore, love, fancy, like, dislike, and mind. So, they are called words of liking and disliking. Тобто, це ті слова, які ми використовуємо для того, щоб говорити про те, що нам щось подобається або не подобається. Окей, now let's think what we like and what we dislike. So, what do you like or dislike doing? Make your own sentences using the phrases here below. I will start. So, the first one, eating ice cream. Personally, I hate eating ice cream. I'm not a fan of it. Listening to music. I love listening to music. I love listening to different styles of music, actually. The next, doing homework. Well, I, I can't say that I hated doing homework when I was a student, but I, I can't say that I enjoyed it too much. So, I didn't enjoy doing homework when I was a student. Singing. Oh, I adore singing. Singing is one of my favorite activities. Swimming. That's also the thing that I don't mind doing when it is um, warm outside or when there is a swimming pool nearby. Okay, and traveling. I think that everybody likes traveling. Personally, I love it. Well, who can dislike traveling? Show me that person. Okay, good. Now your turn to make these sentences. You have one minute to make three sentences using these phrases and the words to the left. Отже, зараз у вас є хвилина на те, щоб написати три речення, використовуючи дієслова з лівої частинки картинки і е, фрази з правої частини.
Okay, so now let's practice the verbs that are followed by ing words. We have six words to the left that we will need to use in the sentences. These are avoid, unikate, recommend, recommendovate, radite, finish, zavershovate, discuss, obhovorovate, miss, sumovate, feel like, hotite. So, these verbs are usually followed by ing of another word. So, if you want to say that you recommend something, you should say, I recommend going to the cinema. Not I recommend to go, not I recommend go, but I recommend going to the cinema. Okay, you're going to see these words in the exercise uh, in the following sentences. Let's start with the first one. We have to choose the correct option. Отже, зараз наша з вами задача – обрати правильний варіант відповіді. The first sentence. They avoided A. Getting hit B. To get hit As the verb avoid is followed by ing, it's quite easy to understand we need to use A. They avoided getting hit The next sentence he really recommends A. Going to football games B. To go to football games What have I just said about the word recommend? It's followed by ing. Which option has ing? That's A. So we should say he really recommends going to football games. Well done. The next one. She has finished A. To watch TV or B, watching TV. What would be the right option? What would be the correct way of saying this sentence? She has finished watching TV. Good. The next sentence. We've discussed moving to New York or to move to New York. Which one do we choose here? A or B? Of course, we've discussed moving to to New York. The next sentence. Jane told me she missed A. Going out with her friends. B. To go out with her friends. After the verb to miss, we usually use the ing. So, we'll say that Jane told me she missed going out with her friends. Okay. And another one. Well, I don't think I feel like dance or dancing. What would be the correct option here? I don't feel like. I don't think I feel like doing something. So we need to say that, well, I don't think I feel like dancing. It means that I don't think that I want to dance. Compare. After the verb want, we use to do something. And after feel like, we use ing. I don't want to dance, but I don't feel like dancing. Okay, good. Very nice. Now, your task is to find the words in a word search. These are the verbs that are followed by ing, and these are the words that we have just discussed with you on today's lesson. So, now you have a two-minute timer. Grab a pen, grab a paper, and try to find the words from this uh, maze that are followed by ing. I'll help you with the first one. In the first line, there is a word dislike. It is followed by ing. You can say, I dislike listening to loud music. So, two minutes for you guys to find the words on this scramble.
OK, now you can check yourself. Well, the words are not only horizontal, they are also vertical and they are diagonal. It was quite hard, wasn't it? So the words are dislike, avoid, adore, finish, fancy, feel like, like, recommend, love, discuss, hate, and enjoy. These words are usually followed by ing. So we enjoy doing something, we love doing something, we recommend doing something, or we discuss doing something. We have discussed going to the cinema tomorrow. So that's how they function. That's how they work in the sentences. OK, well done. Now, this is the time for a final part of our lesson. Here is your home assignment. So for homework, you have to make your own sentences using the words and phrases. To the left, you can see the words that should be followed by ing. The words are fancy, hate, dislike, discuss, avoid, enjoy, and so on. To the right, you have the ideas that you can use after these words. Of course, if you write the sentences of your own using your own ideas, that will be much better. So, you can see the phrases uh, to the right. Play guitar, talk to a friend, call grandparents, travel to Spain, listen to music, watch movies, have a picnic, read a good book, eat healthy food, do sport, and dance. So, don't forget to put the verbs into the correct forms, don't forget to add ing, and here is your task, make your own sentences. So, this is it for today. Our lesson is over. Thank you very much and goodbye.